the question is, what business are you really in? That's the question that needs to be answered. Welcome to story time. I'm gonna talk about the debate of is it a Ferrari or is it a Honda and how this debate set the tone for a new business and how the business went under in six months. Let me tell you a quick story about this debate and argument that uh, I had with the so-called quote-unquote uh, owners of a company when I was brought on as kind of the marketing uh, guy uh, and uh, I'm supposed to build out the sales funnel and it was an argument about is it a Ferrari or is it a Hyundai, all right? So let me give you the backstory of what this is um, and why I'm a firm believer that that was the most pivotal time in the business, in the infancy stage of that business and why Having that argument or even a debate is the reason why that business went under, all right? And so, one of the, if you guys know about some of the businesses I've been part of and some of the business I've helped grow, some of the business that I've been uh, uh, brought on to help grow is one in particular that I was uh, very passionate about because I believe that it was such a big market and we had such a great opportunity to really not only help out the, cu the customers, but also we had a competitive advantage. And that company at that time uh, was called Core Home, right? Core Home uh, was created to bring an importing uh, uh, construction material from uh, overseas from China and we would bring container worth of stuff right and in this construction material it was the finishes to custom homes that we would build from ground up right so we take these little homes knock them down and we would build these custom homes so to have a competitive place in the marketplace as our margins became thinner and thinner um, as the real estate market started heating up and we decided to go ahead and import the finishes right and some people might say that, well, importing the finishes, that takes a lot of time and is the savings really worth it? And the answer is, truth is, yes, it was worth it because one, when you're submitting plans to uh, building and safety to get plans approved for like new custom homes, okay, little McMansions, um, like multi-million dollar homes, right? It takes months. And throughout that, we would order the finishes, okay? Meaning like when you build a house, you put the foundation first, then you put the framing, and then when the framing is done, and you know, put, uh, uh, put in the actual electrical, put in the plumbing, right? Get all that stuff done, get the rough plumbing, rough electrical, get in the insulation, get the drywall, okay? And then you would put in like kitchen cabinets and the last things that you would put in is obviously like kitchen cabinets, uh, vanities, and things like that, all right? So we started to bring those stuff in. Also, uh, one of the biggest things that we believed at that time uh, that can be a huge competitive uh, advantage in the marketplace was some of these calls by full doors, right? These doors that you can put in where it kind of folds up like an accordion, all right? So as the business took off, right, meaning that we used our investment company as a, uh, at that time, uh, as a, as one of the customers for that company, and we installed the products in there, and that's how we started selling the products, okay? And then as, the, as it started taking off, all right, because it started making sales, all right? One night, and at that time, uh, the business partners lived in the front of, we lived on a compound, um, like a 15,000 square feet lot. Um, about 9 p.m. or so, we would have uh, late business meetings, and um, we, we sat down and we were discussing uh, about sales, and we were discussing about positioning, we were discussing about strategy on how to grow it. And as I sat there, I started asking questions. Okay, and these questions were not in a way to insult and or to, uh, uh, to to piss people off. Okay, but it was asked because I wanted clarity on the actual direction. We're sitting here and we're running into challenges of uh, these materials, the finishes that we're putting in. Number one is because we're using uh, factories, like new factories that we brought on, right? So when they finish the product, sometimes when they're shipping it over, right, they will be missing something, right? Or it might be dinged up. And it's messed up because like, imagine like you bring in a vanity and a customer orders like, hey, five vanities or 10 vanities or whatever, and one's messed up. And they have to install that vanity in the custom house. Right, then if that happens, then guess what? It slows down their whole freaking projects. 
okay? So we started noticing all of that, right? Because that happened, they will be dinged up and they can't install it, they can't finish the project, and then we're holding the project back, and if they and they have cost the money, and it costs them money, and we're, we're literally like making them bend over forward, and we're like, ah, you know? <laughs> so, so it was a challenge. So things that we suggested was to, hey, order, uh, uh, bring the skews down even more so it's not like a barrage of tons and tons of skews so that way we can control that so if someone buys it then guess what um, if it's dinged up when it comes into the container then at least we have the ability to give them the same one because we have it in inventory right even though we didn't want to hold on to a lot of stuff in inventory right and one of the other products um, that were selling really well were the bifold doors the accordion doors that were that were closing okay and these accordion doors were great but the question I asked that ended up being a two to, I want to say it might have been like a three hour discussion was the question is I asked, I said, hey, is this a Ferrari or is this a Hyundai, right? And that's what I asked. And instantly, boom, one person looks at me, right? Confused, puzzled look, probably was tired, wasn't all there, right? The other person, right, um, looks at me and says, this is an absolutely a Ferrari, right? And I look and I, and I look kind of puzzled too when they said that. And I said, this is a Ferrari? But I said, but you're not asking for Ferrari price? And she says, no, it's a Ferrari. And I said, this is a Hyundai. I said, you're taking something and you're undercutting the whole marketplace, right? Because these bifold doors was uh, uh, sold by about like a, like, like a handful of companies, right? And they're selling, everyone else is selling them for literally like like uh, uh, like two to 300 bucks a square feet, right? Okay, and we're, we're selling them like 70 bucks a square feet, okay? So we're, we're literally undercutting the whole marketplace, okay, in terms of price. So I kept on asking the question, what are we, right? Are we a Ferrari or are we a Hyundai, right? Because the way you actually market the products are totally different, right? How you market a Ferrari is going to be significantly different than a Hyundai because it's about positioning, right? Because, and then we got into the conversation of utility of the product. And I said, look, and because I kept on saying, it's a Ferrari, it's a Ferrari. And I said, I said, here, let me explain it to you like this. I said, the utility of this is no different than a car. I said, look, a car's utility of a Hyundai or Ferrari is technically the same thing. It takes you from point A to point B. But the reason why the Ferrari costs more is because the intrinsic value and the emotion that people get from uh, actually uh, uh, having a Ferrari. But the utility is exactly the same. And, and so we're going back and forth on that. And I said, look, these bifold doors are exactly the same utility as any other doors. That's what I said. You know, which is, I said, hey, these bifold doors, uh, I said, the utility of it is it allows people to go in and out and also at the same time, it blocks the wind, it blocks the weather, and it insulates, and you can get sunlight. So I said, look, the competition that we're competing with at our price point isn't the people that are buying the Ferraris. I said, it's the people that are buying the regular doors, the regular actual, um, regular uh, French doors or the regular sliding glass doors. And because these sliding glass doors are a lot cheaper, so we have to convince these people to come up on, uh, come up and actually pay more extra instead of having a regular sliding door is to have the bifold, right? And they said, no, 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 just look at this. At this price, everybody would want this, all right? And we went back and forth, literally, I kid you not, on this concept, right? So I'm going back and forth with, uh, with one of the partners. The other guy is looking, he's like kind of clocked out, I could just tell. And then I'm going back and forth. I was like, no, it's not. It's not a Ferrari, it's a Hyundai, right? And, and I'm having this debate. And the reason being I'm having this debate is because one, I was in charge of sales and marketing. And this is where, if you are the owner of the company, is, is especially if you're trying to grow something right, is where the disconnect will happen, especially if you're not in sync with the sales and marketing guy. Because sales and marketing is the bloodline of any business, and yet, if you're the owner of the company and you're in the infancy stage of your business, and you don't really sell. And keep in mind, those individuals believe, you know, order taking is selling, right? And I'm, I'm a firm believer order taking is not selling, right? Like someone calls in and they say, hey, by the way, can I go get a quote on X, right? And you just give them the price and they say, okay, that's really not selling in my opinion. You're order take, right? You're just strictly order take, all right? Like, hey, you're at McDonald's. Would you like, uh, yeah, what would you like, you know? Now, the part of selling would be like trying to upsell, cross sell, right? Those are parts of selling. Like, hey, do you want fries with that, right? Okay, that's upselling, all right? That's part of selling. But taking just a quote is just strictly order take, right? So, so we would get into this when we were literally like sitting there going back and forth. No, it's a Hyundai. No, it's a Ferrari. And 
then and then to a point where uh, to a point where I looked and I said, okay, fine. How would you like me to go ahead and market? Like I got, I had enough, right? And I was just like, because we were li literally like two hours in, and me trying to explain my positioning, why it's important to understand this, because this was, and the reason why I was ex and asked them, and I said, look, and the reason why I'm asking this question is that we're at a crucial point, and, and because at that time they were thinking about opening up an actual storefront, right? Um, and then also changing the website up, right, to a quote unquote e-commerce website. When versus when we launched it, I did not actually do that. I said, hey, hey, he says, well, let's not put a price on there. And there was just like, why should, why would you want to do that and make it so difficult for these people to get a price? And I said, because if you do that, you're losing the intrinsic value and the positioning that you have with the product. I said, if they can get the price from the website, they are not going to contact you or pick up the phone and talk to our sales guy or even talk to me so I can close the deal. So I said, look, the storyline is what? Is that, hey, we have a product, we don't have a warehouse, and because we don't have the warehouse, we can pass those savings on to you, right? And which was a legitimate statement, okay? Versus if you actually put it up, a product on it, like an e-commerce site, then you you just literally become an echo, right? You become an echo in, 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 in the environment of, of the product, right? You just become an echo, right? So I was just like, no, you can't, you cannot do that. You should not do that. And then there was just like, well, our sales guy is saying this, and then at that time, we had like two sales guys, right? One was pretty damn good, the other one uh, was very suspicious, okay? Um, and um, one had significant, one had really, really great talent, man. So uh, um, still to this day, I would love to work with him um, because he had so much talent, um, like untapped talent I'm talking about, like a natural, natural high EQ and could understand people, read people, right? He just wasn't trained for sales, right? Okay, so I was training him up and stuff like that and we would get into arguments about order taking, you know? Like literally, I'm screaming at him. I'm like, going back to the story, right? Ferrari, Hyundai. Right, so we're sitting there. We're about two hours into this meet, uh, to this quote-unquote impromptu meeting, right? And we're sitting there outside, and we're having this discussion, this friendly discussion, as it started off. And then it started becoming a little bit heated because I said, "Look, you need to have this down because look, the website, right? Because they wanted to update the website." I said, "No, no, 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 don't do that because it's working." And the, how the website was set up was literally, "Hey." A video explaining what we do, right? A VSL, video sales letter. And this is basically says, hey, opt in to get a quote, right? Um, opt in to get our flyer, all right? And they would get it and then they'll get hit with the email campaigns basically saying, hey, this is what we're going on and we'll prime them up, right? We're priming them up and says, hey, hey, we're going to be ordering a container very shortly. But when we do order a container, you need to make an order really quickly because you have a small window of opportunity to take advantage of that, right? Now, I still to this day, I think that they never even opted into the funnel and or even looked at the email, okay? That's what I think. Um, I don't know, but so so they wanted to change it up to e-commerce site. I was against it. They wanted to open up a storefront because one of the sales guys and a handful of sales guys were basically saying, "Oh yeah, everyone wants to see the product. Uh, everyone wants to see the product, and we don't have an ability to see the product. And the only thing we have to do is what have them always continuously come to the actual house because we had a home office, right? And we had the product installed at our house, so we would have to show the product at our house. And he said that's inconvenient." right and my position was like it's too early and I said if they truly want to do business and if you actually sold the storyline of again which is the absolute hundred percent truth which is we don't have a warehouse and because of that we can go ahead and pass the savings on to you that line then it should not matter to them where it's actually at I think they would have liked the fact that you don't have a big warehouse right and we would have this and then it came to a point where it says it says hey and I, and I still remember this because I felt like I just got punched in the face too and probably she felt like she got punched in the face too um, which was she says you just don't get it Jeff. and I was just like I guess I don't you know and I said uh, are we done and then the meeting ended. right now looking back now could I have done something Thing a little bit different um, in terms of trying to convince and for a long time I felt very guilty because I, I should have convinced them and or sold them better on why they shouldn't have done the things that they did right um, but that was literally the fall of the dominoes of that particular company because at that time and moment I was just like you know what um, and I knew that once they open up the brick and mortar it was gonna kill it um, because overhead increases the margin the huge margin that you had literally disappears and then now they could not actually invest back into uh, market right so they ended up raising another investors money and open up the storefront I want to say six to nine months later they closed the store and the store went under and the whole company was gone within like 12 months later from that conversation all right and the reason why I want to tell this quick story about is it the Ferrari is it a Hyundai and really the question is what business are you really in that's the question that needs to be answered what business are you truly really in 
and it's the most difficult question to answer when you're just starting up because everyone's pulling you from different directions. And the number one issue that you're going to have, in my humble opinion, is that if you are not in the front lines selling the product and are marketing the product, then you're going to have a significant amount of disconnect with your business, especially in 99.9% .9 of all businesses. Unless it's like a development company and you're like the CTO or something like that, right? A co-founder and you're the, <laughs> the tech company, you're just doing that with all means. Hey, most likely you probably don't know how to sell and you probably don't know how to market because of how the brain operates. And if that's the case, cool, no problem. Let, you know, let someone else handle it. But anything else outside of that, right? If you're in the startup phase and you're not doing your, your, the couple million dollars already, right? Then with all means, you need to be selling, you need to be marketing to ask that question. What business are you really in? Are you in? Are you selling Ferraris or are you selling Hyundai? And that question alone is gonna dictate where your business is gonna go. Because one, we made that mistake and literally the business went on. So, hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, it's a tough one. It was a hard for me to get over for a very long time until I said, ah, I did what I can. I just said, hey, what's the silver line? And the silver lining is they believed it was a Ferrari when in reality you were selling Hyundais.